Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as today is the deadline for the NFL Cut Day where every NFL roster needs to reduce their number of active players to 53. Now, this is different in juxtaposition to years past where there were gradual cut days throughout the preseason. Now, it's just one big deadline where everything's got to go by then. So, this can be a little bit hectic and it's led to us getting a little bit of, you know, extra interesting content push over these past 24 hours and I want to dive into some of the more notable deals. And the first one I'll start with where it doesn't seem like it's going to have all that much impact on the upcoming season per se, but that was very interesting where we saw Malik Willis, former former quarterback of Liberty and of the Tennessee Titans, traded to the Green Bay Packers, getting just a seventh rounder in return. And this was a little bit of a surprise to me, where it felt like Malik Willis had a chance to succeed Ryan Tannehill when the Titans took him in the third round of the 2022 draft. They knew that Tannehill's time was likely coming to an end, which turned out to be true. And Willis, in his rookie season, got three starts that, across the board, just were not good. So, the Titans weren't really satisfied there. They decided they would take maybe another day two flyer on another option. And they ended up getting Will Levis, of course, with the... I think he ended up going 32nd overall, but in that second round pick, based off of a forfeited pick from the first round. But Willis ends up going in the second round to the Titans. And it felt like they knew they were going to need another option, they weren't sold on Willis, and again, just day two flyer, see how it works out for them. And clearly, Will Levis ended up winning that battle. I mean, there were talks about Levis potentially being a first round pick in that year, in the 2023 draft, didn't end up being the case, and he slipped to the second, but I mean, there was a lot to like about Levis coming out of coming out of school at Kentucky where he was able to sort of overcome a bad offensive line. His numbers took a dip because of the fact that with that bad offensive line, he was uh, dealing with some injuries, but the athleticism with him, the ability to get it done on the ground, that alone sort of is at least what caught the attention of me headed into the draft. And clearly there, that with a combination of other things caught the attention of the Titans. Now, Titans, they were, were at least uh, before this deal went through, going to move on to the season with with Will Levis, Mason Rudolph, and Malik Willis as your three quarterbacks. Now they send uh, they send Willis out the door. As things currently stand, I can double check right now, but as I am fairly certain, Titans are left with just two quarterbacks in the room right now which in 2024 that feels like a risky move to me now i would think that there's probably some other move that is going to take place additionally as well but feels like the titans are short on quarterback talent and i don't even know how great their current option is again i like will levis i liked what he was able to show when he played down the stretch of last season but there's still very much an unknown with Will Levis as to whether or not he's going to work out. And I, it's not like they're going to bring in another quarterback that is the answer for them at this point. But you know, Will Levis, like I mentioned, is dealing with some injuries his final season. It's not like Mason Rudolph has a very extensive history of starting either. I think ultimately when you look at sort of the the quarterback situation in Tennessee just feels very, very short um, to me. But uh, very briefly here on the Packers side, they don't have great depth of the position either necessarily. It was Sean Clifford and Michael Pratt as their backups. They drafted Pratt in the seventh round out of Tulane. They just announced this morning, though, they are releasing Sean Clifford. So now the room is Jordan Love, Malik Willis, and Michael Pratt. It's a pretty solid room, if you ask me, um, to have some depth to that as well. So 
wanted to hit on that. Very quickly as well, another quarterback note. Meant to bring this up earlier when we talked about the Patriots quarterback battle. It is official that they are waving quarterback Bailey Zappi. Zappi mania was definitely a thing for a few weeks in New England during the 2022 season. But that's no longer the case. Zappi was not the answer. Ended up The Patriots ended up drafting two quarterbacks in this year's draft. They signed a free agent veteran in Jacoby Brissett. Zappi never had a spot here. So he's somebody who could, you know, probably find his way onto a roster somewhere as a third quarterback. But the Broncos with a uh, decision to shop a little bit some veteran talent where Samaj P. Ryan and Tim Patrick, the running back and wide receiver, both veteran guys in the league, are expected to be released if the Broncos can't find a trade partner. Neither one of them obviously game breakers, but both players I think that, you know, could be could be a part of a playoff caliber team like obviously not his feature running back or receiver but you know could be a help veteran upgrade for a number of different teams that could be interesting and then I want to dive into as well the trade that was just announced during the course of this show this broke I can uh, double check the exact timing for you here uh, about 17 minutes ago 43 minutes ago, maybe at this point, reported by Tom Pelissero initially is what I'm looking at, that the Los Angeles Rams are trading linebacker Ernest Jones IV to the Tennessee Titans. Jones isn't necessarily a household name by any means, but he was the leading tackler for the Rams last season with 145. I don't have the exact numbers ahead of me, but I have to imagine that that is you know, amongst the top ranks in the NFL as a whole. So that's a pretty significant move there, I would argue, is the loss of Ernest Jones from that Rams defense and ends up with the Titans. I kind of really like the signing there by the Titans to be able to pick him up. In exchange, I think they just had to give up a 2026 fifth rounder the Titans actually also got a sixth rounder in return. So Jones, I mean, clearly the Rams didn't really have any intentions of making him continue to be a real go-to guy with the, the future of this defense. So they end up sending him out the door. A um, couple other quick notes here that, again, breaking down this news as it's sort of coming out. A couple other notable ones, the Kansas City Chiefs releasing wide receiver Kadarius Tony. Tony is a little bit infamous at this point after the flame out with the Giants after being a first round selection a few years ago. He ends up going to the Chiefs was, you know, had his moments for whatever it's worth, uh especially on special teams and I think he even cut a t might have caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl in 2022. Um you can fact check me on that. But I think he might have. But, you know, either way, Tony was a fine addition at the deadline for the Chiefs in 2022. But the drops with him were a story from the Chiefs season opener last year. And it just never got better for him. So the, they ended up releasing him. I feel like Tony's going to get another chance somewhere. I wouldn't put all that much faith in it. I mean, he's a very good athlete that... I don't know if he necessarily fully gets credit for. Uh, obviously, very much overshadowed by the amount of drops for him. So I can understand why people aren't necessarily jumping to give him all that much credit. But uh, the last one I will give is that the Arizona Cardinals decided to release Desmond Ritter, which that one kind of came I guess I suppose is a little bit of a surprise we we're just talking about the Cardinals yesterday in the season preview and he was listed as the number two quarterback behind Kyler Murray for whatever it's worth with Kyler he has an injury history you feel like you might want some backup options there but Clayton Toon seems to have beat him out for that number two job as I just cannot believe, and this is probably one of the last times we'll ever talk about 
unless you know no no disrespect but probably one of the last times we'll ever talk about Desmond Ritter at least here on this show and I just cannot get over the fact that the Falcons passed on Lamar Jackson Arthur Blank talking about how he's confident in what they have with Taylor Heineke and Desmond Ritter when Lamar Jackson was very much on the table um last off season just crazy to me that that was their plan was Desmond Ritter and now he's getting cut from the Arizona Cardinals for Clayton Toon just really tough situation there but you know let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section again some some of these are maybe a little bit more minor but interesting to keep up with but I mentioned the Ernest Jones trade from the Los Angeles Rams and I want to dive into that because Ernest Jones is not the only big loss from a significant contributor in 2023. The retirement of Aaron Donald, Raheem Morris leaving their defensive coordinator, leaving to take the head coach job in Atlanta, that this is going to be a different Rams team in this upcoming season. Will they be able to continue to succeed even with the losses of some big name guys? So we will dive into that debate, but first a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 